I used to struggle reading the Quran daily before you instructed, instructed me to download this app. I never knew that this app would have such an impact on people's lives. You can go into the description box, click the link for iOS and Android and build your habit with the Quran right now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. Hope you guys are well, inshallah. We're going to get straight into this video. This video is about Sihr, specifically a Muslim brother who is claiming that he's involved in Sihr. What kind of Sihr? What kind of magic is this? There are two types of magic. One, which is illusion. Number two is actual Sihr that is done by working with the unseen to cause harm or have benefits from them. We're going to tackle this issue, inshallah, and talk about the brother himself, why he's involved, his hereafter, his repentance, and in general, in a nutshell, what this means for us, inshallah, and what we can learn from it. Here is the video. Let's dissect it one by one, inshallah. See, I just got another comment now on my TikTok saying, um, you do black magic, you'll never go heaven. It's just like comments like this as well. Cool, I might do it, but it's just, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect you. And not only that, it's like, um, here's another story. Okay, so just the first thing to touch upon, him going heaven or hell, we do not know that. But what we do, what we do know in general ruling, and we're not doing takfir, we're not calling this brother the speaker, we're giving general rulings here, is that the one who's involved in sihr becomes a disbeliever. Can they repent? Of course they can repent. What is a ruling for that, pertaining that? We're going to come to later. But his hereafter, him going heaven or hell, or not going hell, we do not know that. Obviously, depends on what the person dies upon, which we're going to come to later, but I don't think anyone should make comments of you're going hell or not. This is actually discouraging and cause, can cause somebody to further go to sin. Like we know of the man who killed 100 people. The more he was told that he cannot be forgiven, the more he went on a killing rampage. So it is important for us to always open the doors of mercy to the believer. But let's carry on. I think a few months ago, my skin started getting really bad. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I'll give you a picture and you can put it up on the screen yeah. and show how bad my skin was. And this skin was so bad that every hour of the day it started bleeding. Oh my God. It started bleeding out my face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's really cleared up now. Yeah, it's really cleared up, but it's literally started bleeding on my face. And I'll tell you why it cleared up as well in a sec. And that was basically a punishment from God because of what I do, right? Mm. Is that what people are saying to you? Or is that something that you think? No, that's something I know. Okay. <laughs> Okay, another interesting point here. He is outright acknowledging that this is a punishment from Allah. Now, the way he says he knows, now personally, we know that it, it is a punishment from Allah because if we do something which is haram, it has consequences. Even if we repent, sometimes the consequences do not leave us. But he says he knows, but where does he know it from? It's as if he's saying that he knows it from some kind of a jinn kind or the unseen. Let's carry on watching. Like, this is getting deep now. Because, you know, this is obviously my chest and loads of spots and I'm thinking they're red as well. They're not like your normal average spots, they're like red as hell. Mm -hmm. So they're like red as this, right? And now I'm thinking, okay, cool. This is getting serious now. Like, what am I doing? Like, am I doing it or am I not doing it? So I was like, yeah, let me do it. Then after that, I went and talked to whoever I wanted to talk to. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was like, you know, what are these spots? And then that's how it slowly started getting cleared up because I, I made another deal with them. So the, the spots started clearing up, but the tricks are going to get way more bigger and impossible. And who did you speak to? And, and, and what I'm going to do is more dangerous because now... It's just mad because the other day, I think I put on my Snapchat, um, my lips started bleeding up. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you see it? Or let me show you. It's, it's because of that deal I signed, right? Okay. It's because of what, not the sign, but it's, it's because of the deal I made with them. Um, my lips started, let me show you. It's just, it's just a lot of weird things that have been going on. Like I crashed my car two days ago, my lips started bleeding. It's fucked, I had to go to hospital and everything. So what I did, what I, what I, what I made the deal with them has made me become really more dangerous. Like it's just worse for me. Okay. But I had to do it because of my presence on camera because the spots were too bad. So now like. So can I ask like what deal this was and who, who this was? Very interesting points here. He is acknowledging that this is a punishment from Allah. And his acknowledgement is as if the unseen world is telling him this is a punishment from Allah. Now, what is very interesting is that at this moment of time when I was watching this, I would expect him to say, you know what? I learned my lesson and he mentioned multiple stuff, spots bleeding, his tongue bleeding, him having car crashes. This reminds me of an ayah in the Quran, from what I can remember paraphrasing, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you probably see on the screen, um, the actual uh, ayah, that Allah will give you signs and signs and signs until you push them away, 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 in a nutshell, that's what the ayah is saying, that Allah will open the doors to what you want, because Allah has given you calamities is a way for us to turn to Allah. And then once you ignore them, Allah opens all the doors to you, what you want, no problem. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the end of the ayah, and then we seize them suddenly. When he least expected it, he was seized. Brothers and sisters, when I'm watching this brother, if this brother's watching this, you're in a nutshell, brother, accepting this is a punishment from Allah. And instead of repenting and turning away, brother, and you still have time for repent, I don't want you to feel like you cannot repent. You can. You know, like Allah says in the Quran, you know, قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ قُلْ يَا إِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ 
إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَكْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَكْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Don't forget this ayah, Aki. You, it's not too late. But the point I'm seeing is that as if you, instead of repenting, you are like, you know what now? I'm going to go and do another deal. Why would you do that, Aki? Brother, why would you do that? You are now, unless it is that as a punishment that those spots or things were going to stay and not go, and you was more concerned about your public image, and at the cost of the hereafter, you wanted to declare faster, so you did an agreement with them? That's how it seems to me. Aki, is it worth it? Losing this life over some glamour. Now, many of you guys might not know, but I have an eye condition, which I'm going to do a video about in detail, and it's deteriorating. If somebody came to me, and I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me and not test me with it, but if somebody came and said to me, we're going to, you know, stop your eyesight from deteriorating, and, but you have to deal with, deal with it, I'll say, to hell with you. Yeah, and losing my eyesight in this life, at least Allah opened my eyes to Islam. I was blind before like that spiritually. Losing my eyesight, if it comes to that, why would I do a deal with the unseen and lose the hereafter? For a mere few years of here, whatever it may be. Aki, it's not worth it. So the point I'm saying is this, it's still not too late. Let's carry on watching. Oh my god, and this was the other day? I did see that, I saw that. I saw that on your snap. Yeah, okay, no, I did see that. Just forget what I'm saying, I did see that, yeah. Yeah, so um. So who, who was like this deal made with? Like what was this deal? If you want to dig a little bit deeper into that because I'm a bit confused by that comment. It's just that if I say too much, things can just get worse for me. Okay. So I'd like to not say too much, but it was with the other side. It was with the, the black magic side, if you want to call the it devil. that. The devil. Well, maybe, yeah. Okay. Live with it? You have to live with it, exactly. So. Did, you, did you feel throughout this process, though, that at one point you thought, should I, should I give up magic? Have you ever thought that? Well, you can't do that. Because have you thought it? Of course I've thought it, but you, I can't do that anymore. Because what I've got myself into, you can't get yourself out of. Okay. Because when you do, you die. <laughs> so, so if you stop magic... You, like, well, like that's you think that's the end that, that, well that's the end for me like because of what i've got myself into is it's scary like it's genuinely scary so i feel like that just proves that magic is much deeper than people think it is much deeper so okay one thing that i see is sadly um to the brother i don't know like if it's that serious or this that and you know very well this is a matter of the unseen and you are losing the hereafter at the cost of the dunya i mean it's not a matter to be joking about you seem like you're very laughing about it i don't know how serious you are i don't know i'll be honest i don't know how serious to take you if it's true what you're saying, I would just say to you, look, number one, there is, don't lose hope. They're scaring you that, oh, you're going to get killed, etc. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help and get you out of this. But you have to do some serious repentance, like serious repentance. And we're going to come to the rulings on people who are involved in this because um, you are involved in magic, which is illusion, which we cannot say is a kufr for you to, you know, some scholars might hold that opinion, but is it kufr to do illusion, etc. You know, and some of the sahaba were very severe with individuals who did that actually, you know, um, uh, they applied capital punishment on them. However, you are talking about actual sihr, actual sihr, which is disbelief. You become a disbeliever. Now, again, doesn't mean that you cannot come and repent sincerely, you know. So the point is here that you need to explore that and not go down that route. But let's carry on watching. Okay, so here he's doing some kind of a <coughs> illusion, trick, whatever it may be. Um, can we necessarily say this takes you at the fold of Islam? No, is it kufr? I don't know if we can really say that here because you're just doing some kind of an illusion. So let's see what this uh, magic is. I'll think of one. Okay, cool. I've thought of one. Okay, cool. Look at me. Do you think about the rapper in your mind? Okay, he's good. Okay, cool. All right. I'm gonna try this. Hold this in half. Just like this. I want you to keep thinking about that. Look at me. No, I think I'm just gonna cut this in. Specific. Surely you're not gonna be able to get it. The thing is, I, I, I used to practice origami when I was young. I was going to say, even if you get it, how are you going to cut it like perfectly? I used to practice origami when I was young. and um, It's coming into use now? It is coming into use. I'm actually going to be really shocked if you can guess who I'm guessing. For the first time, what rapper were you thinking of? Drake. Drake. Yeah, I was thinking of Drake. If we open this up now, right? Watch. Watch. Watch, I'm going to open this up now. Is that Drake? Wait, what? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to say, I can't really get too deep into it, but, you know, I am a Muslim that does magic, so in their eyes, like, is it right? Is it wrong? This and that. But I don't want to get too deep into it. So yeah, that's just my answer. I know that didn't really make sense, but it's just a bit deeper than it was before. That's what I'm like. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, that, that was actually something I wanted to ask you. Obviously, you're a young Asian boy doing magic. You're, you're Muslim. Does that? Does there anything that like conflicts with being Muslim and doing magic as your basic, basically full time career? Now, obviously, a lot of Muslims or majority of every Muslim says magic's are wrong. Now, the way I see it, right, is um, everyone sins, right? Everyone does wrong things in this world. It's just that if I'm doing something wrong, it shouldn't it shouldn't affect you. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to my grave. I'm going to die alone. No one's going to die with me. That's the way I see it. I know that's a bit deep, but like, that's the way I think of it all the time. Yeah, I remember in lockdown, I think it was... 
So what's very interesting is when he says, you know, I'm going to go in my grave, etc. You know the typical thing people who's involved in sin, you know, God's going to judge me. But what you need to understand, this is not your ordinary sin. This is not your ordinary sin. And what you're doing is not about, it's not going to affect someone else. The act of sihr involves breaking up marriages and affecting or attacking individuals or doing certain things at the cost of losing the hereafter. This is, not, this, this is way beyond you. This is, this is like, you know, this is on the next level. So it's really important for us to understand, I'm going to my grave, yes. But what you're doing is very, very severe. Very, very severe in Islam. Now, so when it comes to now the ruling, the ruling is very simple. There's a capital punishment when it comes to individuals who are involved in actual sihr or anything like it in a legitimate Islamic government. That's what the Sharia calls for. Because their harm, if you think about it, somebody might do something like, for example, slander someone, um, etc., whatever it may be, and there are capital punishments that can be applied. But with this one, why is capital punishment? Is because this individual could lie and in his household could be harming others. He can be in his household doing magic and sihr. Whoever it is, I'm not talking about this specific brother. They could be doing that. That's why the capital punishment is applied immediately. Why? To save their harm. However, the scholars, <coughs> the scholars um, uh, unanimously agree on that. One other thing is that, for example, what Sheikh Uthay means, uh, Majma Fatawa, he says that, however, if the individual comes to the government and says to the judge and says, look, I sincerely repent, I did this and I sincerely repent without the authorities catching him first. If it's catching him first, it's a capital punishment. If he comes to authorities, there is a room for repentance and change their ways because he shows some kind of remorse. However, if one doesn't do that, the capital punishment applies. This shows how severe the matter is and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested. So a message to my brother, it's not worth it. Brother, it's not worth it. Allah is sending you signs by these spots, your tongue bleeding, your car crash you're getting into. It's as if Allah is telling you to turn back to him. And believe me, the more you turn a blind eye to these, the more the end is going to be very, very bad. Not only in this life, if it was just this, this life, you could say, okay, whatever. In the hereafter, bro, it's going to be severe. Is it worth going there because of some glamour and fame? You're saying, Drake hit me up. Do you think Drake's going to care about you on that day? Drake's going to ask Allah to throw you into the fire instead of him. Aki, it is not worth it. It is not worth it, man. I'm telling you, wallahi, when I saw this, I was so disturbed. And the fact that you know it's a punishment and you're carrying on doing agreements with these people. Just so your spots can be fixed up because your public image. Really? Think about it. Wallahi, the doors of repentance are open. It's still open, bro. Change your ways before it's late. And whatever consequences come with it, meaning if you lose your fame, you got the spots back, whatever it is, wallahi, put up with it. It is better that you get these things as an expiation in this life rather than in the hereafter you're totally as a, become a disbeliever, total. If you've done something, you have to bear the consequences. Repent and whatever Allah sends as an expiation or he chooses not to, that's up to him. Please go with that option all day, every day, rather than losing this life and the hereafter. That's all, all I have to say, brothers and sisters. Hope you guys have benefited from this, inshallah. And may Allah protect us, wallahi. It just shows how much we are impacted by our society, peer pressure, views, fame, that people are going down the route even when Allah is sending signs that they are persisting on making agreements with the unseen, the jinn world, just so they could carry on and having these perks. It's not worth it, man. It really is not worth it. That's the bitter truth, brothers and sisters. May Allah protect us. Till next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.